そりえディエナルボーリエティエスノークラッドヒマリアンリージョンズオブトカントリー Are endowed with mesmerizing natural beauty and amazing biodiversity, be it flora or fauna. The region is inhabited mainly by various tribal communities who have nurtured a unique relationship with animal species in their socio cultural practices and livelihood support. Yak is the most loved and favored predominant life species in this regard, nicknamed. As Ship of Mountains or Mountain Machine, Yak is a multi purpose bovine animal with amazing adaptability for snow bound mountains. Yaks are reared in Himalayan belts of Arunachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Sikkim, Himachal Pradesh, West Bengal, and Uttarakhand. Currently, nearly 77,000 yaks are contributing to socio economic activities of pastoral nomads. Such as Brook Pass, Druk Pass, and Chang Pass, living in the remote mountains of Himalaya. Yak husbandry is a reliable source of livelihood and nutritional security of this economically challenged society. Yak herds provide milk and meat for nutrition, wool for clothing and tents, dung for fuel, hides for making mats and carpets, and draft power for plowing and carrying loads. Yak possesses some remarkable physical and physiological attributes, such as ability to sustain severe cold up to minus 50 degrees Celsius, travel comfortably on snow bound steep hills, hence, useful for transportation, live in low oxygen, that is, under hypoxic conditions, survive in very low, almost zero feed inputs, and graze at 6,000 meters above sea level. Hence, yak husbandry is highly remunerative with cost ratio up to 4 is to 1. The unique livestock is a form of capital in this society used for various sale purchase transactions. In order to raise productivity of yaks and develop yak husbandry based on scientific management practices, the Indian Council of Agricultural Research established National Research Center on Yak at Dirang. Arunachal Pradesh in the year 1989. The center has strategically planned and launched various research and extension programs to provide a well protected livelihood to highlanders from yak rearing. This NRC Yak is the unique institute in the world, the whole world, I say, and it, certainly it is within the, within the ICR system, it is a very unique institute, exclusively mandated for conservation and improvement of yak in our country. Yak rearing system in our country is very primitive one, and the livelihood of the tribal people are totally dependent on yak rearing. <coughs> so, keeping those things in mind and the situation of the uh, yak rearers in our country, these institutes are providing a lot of scientific impetus. We are working on the health, we are working on breeding, we are working on the nutrition of the yak as well as value addition of the products so that. The farmers get maximum benefit out of it. In Arunachal Pradesh, broke parts of Monpa tribe are rearing yaks under a unique annual transhumane system, where herders and yaks migrate from low altitude winter pastures to high altitude summer pastures. Usually, migration to summer pastures begins from mid May to June, and the return journey to winter pastures commences in October. During winters, yaks are allowed to freely graze in pasture lands, simultaneously grazed by sheep, cattle, and ponies. The overgrazing has deteriorated pasture lands, and yaks suffer severe starvation and nutritional deficiency. During this period, yaks lose 25 to 30 percent of their body weight, and the milk production also suffers. To address this important aspect, NRC on Yak has developed complete feedblock technologies utilizing locally available crop resources such as corn stover, finger millet straws, 
edible tree leaves, etc. Area specific mineral mixtures and concentrate yak feeds have also been developed, which provide balanced nutrition to yak population. To meet up the hungry gaps in yaks, NRC and yak have developed some complete feedback technology utilizing some crop residues like straw strawbars and edible tree leaves with supplementation of some area specific mineral mixtures and concentrate feeds. And this technology have already proved better results for both growing and lactating animals. Conservation of fodder in form of silage and pasture development are also making a positive impact on nutritional status of yak herds, thereby raising the productivity. I have 58 yaks and I have employed 2-3 workers to look after them. Earlier, the broke pass, uh, my community people, uh, they used to take them to high altitude and uh, they used to face many problems. Earlier, there was less production because of less milking. After NRC's intervention, the broke pass were helped by providing them with feed blocks. And now, the milk production has increased. Through demonstrations, they have trained us and now we are making paneer, we are making cheese and all Brokpas are benefiting from this. We are all very happy. NRC Onyak conducts animal vaccination and deworming at its veterinary polyclinic located within the campus as well as in field. It serves yak rearers of nearby villages and has successfully reduced incidences of diseases such as foot and mouth disease, hemorrhagic septicemia, black water, and brucellosis. Adoption of deworming measures as per schedule save yaks from deleterious effects of roundworms, liver flukes, and tapeworms. Measures for control of common external parasites are also disseminated to yak herders. Many of the diseases occurring in cattle may be also transmitted to the yak due to the sharing of common grazing ground during the winter season, due to scarcity of feed and fodder, and also due to the breeding of yak with deworming and vaccination is to be done regularly in the field as well as in the farm to save the yaks from the deleterious effects of the parasites and also to save the yaks from uh, various diseases like HS, BQ and FMD. Our institute has been successfully conducting this program in the field as well as in the farm. A healthy yak herd is the prime wealth and asset of the nomadic community. But to improve productivity and reproductive efficiency, it is essential to exchange the bull of the herd with other herds at least every two years. Otherwise, inbreeding occurs in the herd, which reduces variation, performance and other useful characteristics. The NRC on Yak selects superior bulls in the farm and their semen is frozen for further uses in artificial insemination. Artificial insemination is one of the oldest reproductive biotechnology for rapid genetic improvement of livestock. In yak also, this technique can be readily used. And it is said that inbreeding is one of the important cause of declining yak population. Therefore, we can use this technique for genetic improvement of these animals. This is the only center in the country where yak semen is collected and cryopreserved. We have already given yak semen to the states like Jammu and Kashmir and to Sikkim. We are also trying to collaborate with other yak rearing states like Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand and we are trying to transfer our technology to those states also. Technology of AI has been standardized and the services are provided to yak herders within 12 hours of heat. A single ejaculation inseminates only one cow where 200 cows can be inseminated by AI. My yak got artificial insemination here in this center. The baby yak born by AI was very healthy and good. When it grew up, it started giving more milk, which increased our income. I told other yak owners of my village to bring their yaks to this center for AI. It's very good. Moving further, the center has developed and standardized embryo transfer technology and in vitro fertilization techniques to address the issue of conservation and multiplication of superior germ plasma of yak. A calf was born for the first time through embryo transfer technology in 2005 and was named as Mismo. Another calf was born in the year 2013 by using IVF technology and it was named Norgyal. These achievements are promising a bright future for yak rearers 
by raising productivity and profitability. In this lab, we are trying to conserve the superior germ plasma of yak, which is very important when we are talking about the field perspective. And we are developing here in vitro embryos, and we could get a success in developing first IVF calf in the globe. And with this success, now we want to take this technique to the field so that farmers can be benefited at the most and this technique can be a boost in the future. Traditionally, broke pass prepare butter or mar, wet cheese, hard cheese candy or churkam, cheese stored in animal hide or churthang and paneer or prum from yak milk. They have their own age-old production techniques, which generally lack efficiency and desired quality. Similarly, broke pass sell fresh yak meat, dried meat and smoked meat in local downtown market or barter for consumable items like salt, rice, etc. Production technologies have been improvised and value-added products of milk and meat have been developed, which have good market opportunities. Traditionally, caps, coats, ropes, tents and mats are prepared from yak wool and fibers. But technologies for preparation of yak hair fiber and jute blended fabrics and yak and sheep wool blended woolen clothing, foot mats and wall hangings have been developed and demonstrated among farmers and prospective entrepreneurs. Not many people are aware that yak has two kinds of hair, an inner fine hair and an outer coarse hair. Inner fine hair is used for making garments, but the outer fine hair is used for making only robes, uh, traditional cap and uh, tents. And most of it is wasted. The farmers just throw it. So what this institute is doing is we are buying those waste fibers from the farmers and in collaboration with National Institute of Research on Jute and Allied Fibers, we are blending it with jute and value addition of that we are doing. So in this institute, we have installed a fabric forming unit and a garment uh, making unit. And thereby we are giving uh, training to the farmers of this area and trying to bring up some entrepreneurs who will use these wasted fibers and make a living out of it. Production technologies are getting good response and favor, especially from youth who have been earlier relinquishing yak rearing due to low profitability. Market linkage support is also provided to entrepreneurs. ICAR NRC on Yak centers for training to make coat, jacket, cap, etc. from Yak wool at ICR near Jaft, Kolkata. The product made from yak wool and jute such as jacket, bag, file folder are very much useful for our Monpa people. I am very much benefited from such training and recently signed MOU with ICAR NRC on Yak to make these products independently. Yak based eco tourism is another untapped opportunity for youth to raise their income. NRC on Yak is committed to raise socio economic status of yak herders across the country and rejuvenate yak husbandry with technological interventions. As such, it envisions less number of yaks with higher productivity, designer yak population and smart marketing of yak products in accordance to the dynamic demand of the society. NRC on Yak has all the high-tech instruments to carry out advanced genomics works. In recent times, scientists of this institute has made a breakthrough in yak genomics for differentiation of fertile and subfertile yak bulls through identification of yak MSY genes and by working out expression profile of miRNAs. Animal genetics and breeding is the major component for yak research. There are two parts in this research actually one is animal genetics and other is breeding. For breeding actually we look into the physical and morphological characters for the yaks and for the first time we have breed described for the Ornasoli yak and this has been submitted for a Ornasoli as a breed. And second part uh, genetics part. Genetics parts we do high in work, high in genomic works like sperm transcriptomics, identification of Y chromosome and different gene discovery for the yak. 
For transcriptomic parts, we have already identified some marker from yak bull, which are used for the identify fertile and subfertile bull. And for the identification of Y chromosome, this is we are very lucky. This work has been already like written in the Prime Minister two years achievements. We identified 12 genes for the yak. Arunachali yak has been characterized for the first time in yak tracts of Arunachal Pradesh, which is invariably an initial signature towards breed characterization of yaks for the first time in the globe. The yaks are reared at a place where it is more than 10,000 to 15,000 feet uh, above the main sea level where the scientist goes to the farmer doors, they demonstrate the technology, they try to understand their difficulties, bring back those problems in the laboratory. We develop the pro uh, different technology and go to the farmer again and to demonstrate them with the purpose that the, all the benefits of the scientific technology and scientific intervention should go to the farmers so that they can derive maximum out of the yak husbandry and get the highest remuneration. As our Prime Minister was telling that farmers income has to be doubled and if the scientific technology is adopted by the farmer, I am, I am sure that it will be four times increase in their income. Efforts of the NRC on yak have set the transformation rolling in yak husbandry. Nomadic families and communities now enjoying yak husbandry as a profitable venture. Happiness and prosperity is all around. Let's join the celebrations.